Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast. My name is Maria Pinilla. I am a BI Analytics Consultant here at Hogood. I am based in the London office, and I am part of the Tableau team. And today, I would be walking you through some of the new updates available on Tableau's latest release. We're a specialist in independent business intelligence and analysis consultancy. And we operate globally with offices in the UK, the US, India, Singapore, and Brazil. And we have a vast amount of experience in delivering solutions, right, from helping to shape the initial scoping requirements through to delivery and support. And we also offer strategy services and user adoption and empowerment programs. As I mentioned, we are an independent consultancy. And with that, I mean that we partner with some of the key vendors in the BI space, such as Anaplan, SAP, Databricks, Microsoft, and Tableau. So for today's webcast, our focus will be on this last one, on Tableau. Our Tableau practice and partnership was initiated back in 2012. And since then, we've established Thurgo as a member of Tableau's partner advocacy board. And we were previously named partner of the year in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions. But now that we've done the introductions, let's have a quick look at today's agenda. So first, for those who aren't familiar with Tableau, I will be giving a brief overview on the various offerings of the tool to then jump onto a brief market analysis of the BI landscape as understood by Gartner, where I'll touch upon how Salesforce acquisition of Tableau has contributed to its higher positioning as a leader in the market. And then I will start by highlighting some of the features present in last year's release that really showcased the direction that Tableau is taking to then describe what major updates Tableau has come up for its 2020 releases, which are 2020.1 and 2020.2 beta. So without further ado, let's get started. So at a high level, uh, Tableau's product suite can be broken down into Tableau Desktop, which is a version of Tableau that sits on your local machine and enables you to quickly create visualizations to get insights from your data. Then we have Tableau Server, which is a web-based platform that allows for user collaboration and sharing of data. And then we also have Tableau Online, which is a software as a service version of Tableau Server that is maintained and hosted by Tableau in the cloud. And finally, you have Tableau Prep, which was the latest addition to the stack. And this is a data manipulation tool um, that enables you to do quick and easy data transformations just by dragging and dropping icons into a flow. But also part of the Tableau stack, um, the tool offers an access to several add-ons and extensions that take the user a step further towards customization and ownership of your own data stories. So from this brief overview, we can already determine the Tableau is a consolidated tool with a vast range of offerings across various platforms. And as such, it has long been established as a leader in the market. So this that I'm showing now is the BI and Analytics Garner Magic Quadrant for 2020, which essentially maintains that conclusion that I just said by analyzing the performance of the key vendors in the BI space. And the way to read this quadrant is across the x-axis, um, we have completeness of vision, and that is innovation and around product presentation, whereas on the y-axis, we have ability to execute. And in this way, we can have a quick glance at the market and define who is shaping it both by having a strong and innovative product and by being able to deliver quality by execution. So that is who's situated on the leader's quadrant would be the one defining the strategy for the whole market. And for the past two years, the key evaluation criteria to design this quadrant had been AI and cloud ecosystem dominance. And according to this, Tableau championed the BI landscape with its additions of Explain NAS data in 2019. But for 2020, Ghana expounds on this approach, and it actually says that it is the combination of AI and ML with the feasibility of creating and consuming data stories, data governance, and embedded analytics, what will be settling the ground for the new ABI decade. And in this conclusion with this criteria and some others, such as data cataloging, we can actually see that Tableau has moved up the ladder of the leaders with improvements to the data management add-on on server, but also of influence is the new Salesforce acquisition, which occurred on August the 1st, 2019. 
And this has pushed up Tableau up the leader's road, but also has created both opportunities and challenges for the tool. Because on the one hand, Tableau bolsters, sorry, Salesforce bolsters Tableau in three key emerging areas of the ABR platform, which are AI, cloud, and embedded analytics, but it also introduces uncertainty because both products already had a very robust product line that kind of overlapped with each other. And in fact, as we can see from the quadrant, Salesforce remains classified as an independent vendor and is situated in the visionary region, likely being pushed up uh, toward the leader quadrant by its AI capabilities available on entity analytics. Now back to Tableau. As we said, in 2019, it significantly blows in the scope of its product offerings, and particularly its augmented analytics and data governance capabilities. So for the first one, Tableau introduced both Ask Data and Explain Data to provide natural language query and automated insights. But on the governance side of things, it also improved its data management features with the data management add-on available on server. So as a quick recap, uh, the data management add-on consists of both the Tableau Prep Conductor and the Tableau Catalog features. And the whole vision behind this offering is to enhance the tool's data governance capabilities at the same time that it encourages sharing and collaboration among users. And if you're interested in seeing a demo of this feature, my colleagues Deb and Amanda over at the US did a very cool webcast last year on the 2019 uh, Tableau product release. So I've left a link to that in the slides, so make sure to check that one out. But now moving on to the real deal. In 2020, we have seen Tableau continue to invest heavily on making analytics more and more accessible to tell more compelling stories and also allow the user to save time while building them. And on the data quality management and data governance side, we have seen improvements on the data management add-on, which now allows to get to the right data faster with improvements on the catalog connector. And, but as they say, better visibility means better data management as well. And now you can easily visualize and relate to your data stored in some sources such as Google BigQuery, Google Sheets, and Cloud Files, among others. But also part of the data management add-on improvements, users can now limit access to user information such as, for example, names, email addresses, display names, uh, all this on catalog, which will work towards secure data governance and data platform. But Tableau has also improved its native, its native connectors for Tableau desktop to a range of tools, including Salesforce and Snowflake. And it has also um, allowed for a direct connection with Impala, both on desktop and on the web via Tableau server and Tableau online. But the other screen Tableau has been following in its 2020 updates reconciles the tool with the use that developers make of Tableau. For example, some improvements have been made on PrEP and such being um, login-based license management and LOD calculations, which stands for level of detail calculations. So the first one, uh, login-based licenses, allow creators to activate both um, Tableau desktop or Tableau PrEP just by simply logging in with a Tableau server credential. And what this does is it eliminates the need to enter and consequently manage different product keys. On the other hand, LOD calculations mimic the power of aggregation that Tableau desktop is renowned for. And now being available on Tableau PrEP, what they do is they enable the user to prepare and analyze data and multiple levels of granularity, reducing the number of transformations needed, and also getting your data uh, to the shape that you want it to be before loading it into your desktop offering. Then lastly, for this 2020.1 release, what Tableau has done leveraging its power on the ease of access to data or the new features on data management is it has come up with some additions to visualizations that complement data stories even more, answering deeper questions and getting to the right data faster. And these are dynamic parameters, this animations and buffer calculations that we'll see in action in just one minute. But before, let me talk to you a bit about them. So these animations help you to see and understand your changing data. So you can set this at a workbook or at a worksheet level. And what this feature does is it adds dynamism and insightfulness to your data. 
on Zivago calculations. So Tavo had always been a leader in the geospatial visualizations landscape, let's say, but with buffer calculations, what you can do now is you can draw spatial boundaries around certain data points that allow you to visualize the proximity between locations. So it's as if you were comparing tables and maps all together in one visual, let's say. And then lastly, we have dynamic parameters, which um, automatically refresh the data present on your workbook as soon as your data changes in your backend or in your data source. So what this does is it, re it eliminates essentially the need of um, refreshing your, your data source and then republishing workbooks. So what I have here is um, a dashboard with market information for four hypothetical leading supermarkets in the US. And from the graph in the middle, we can see how the West region in the US has reported the most sales with Penniland dominating the whole of the US market. However, on the bar chart at the right, we can see that the super discount is the retailer with the biggest profit ratio. But let's have a look at the map now on the left. What this visual is telling us is uh, the various collision areas in the US. And that is what zones have the highest density of supermarkets and how far from each other they are. So we have built this visual making use of um, the buffer calculation. So let me just expand the sheet and show you how we build this. So first thing we did is we built a parameter that would feed the buffer size into the buffer calculation. So essentially, this will bring more dynamism and interact interactivity to our dashboard by having set a minimum and a maximum range uh, of five and a hundred units to then feed onto the parameter calculation. And we are going to be able to increase or decrease the size of our area, of our buffer, just by making use of this slider at the right. So then onto the buffer calculation, all we really need are three different points. First thing, we need a location. That is, we need a geospatial point. In this case, we are using US zip code. And that's our first field that we can see in the calculation here. Then we need size. So that is how big do we want our buffer to be? And that is our buffer size parameter that I just showed. And then we just need to give Tableau a unit of measurement. So I have set kilometers for this case, but we can use miles, we can use centimeters, we can use feet, we can use anything really. So we saw that. I just put the buffer field onto the detail level and we get this map of the US with the different collision areas. So now going back um, to my sales dashboard, um, as it is, you can tell us a story on how these various retailers compete against each other. But by making use of the new this animation feature, we can see how this data moves and compares not only across regions, but also across um, retailers. And most importantly, who is the leading retailer in, in one of those regions that we select. So before we said that the West region was the one with the highest sales. So if I just click now on this visual in the middle, we can see how our bar chart on the right has changed dynamically. So now Penniland is the retailer that has the highest profit ratio and also the highest sales. If we look now, at the map on the left in our collision areas, we can see that the most collided cities have been San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. However, because the buffer size is set to 65, which may be a bit big of a number, I am able to decrease the size with that just by sliding on the parameter that I build, and I'm gonna reduce that size to 20. And now I am able to perform a better analysis by just having reduced the size of my buffer. So now zooming in into what cities we think are the most collided, we can see that in fact, it's been Los Angeles. So let me just show you now another of the features of the business innovations. I'm going to be selecting just the data that I want to look at from my map. So that is, I'm interested in seeing data for Los Angeles. So I'm just going to select all of those data points and you will see how all my dashboard get filtered to Los Angeles data. Now we can see 
from the visual in the middle that it's actually Penelan, the retailer with the highest sales, but that Whole Goods have had the highest profit ratio. So as you can see, what this animations do is not only it brings more dynamism and fun in a way to your dashboard, but it also adds context to rankings because you are able to see how um, your different uh, categories, your different wholesalers, or your different um, supermarkets in, the, in this case change depending on what selections you make on your visual on all your dashboard. And uh, how I said this is you simply go to format here onto our animation pane. And as I said before, we can set this at a workbook level or at a worksheet level. And you're also able to customize the style of your transition. So it can be sequential or simultaneous. And also you're able to change the duration of the same. And now a similar addition on this animations are like play accesses. So in this line chart at the bottom, I just have a sales strength for the different years. If I click on play on this control that I have on the right, I'm going to be able to see how sales were changing across the different years for the selection that I had made on my map. So that is for the city of Los Angeles. And from the legion below, we can see that we have three different categories for the sales trend, which are furniture, office supplies, and technologies. Actually, if I pause now my flow, I see there's been a spike in technology sales for December 2017. So just by clicking on that data point, again, my whole dashboard would automatically change and show me data for that specific data point. And as we can see now, for example, ASDO has dropped from um, the supermarket sales and super discount is back on the lead with the highest profit ratio. Now on to the latest of the features, dynamic parameters. Um, I'm just going to mimic what would happen with our database. So information that I'm passing through to this dashboard is actually contained in an Excel file. I am, I'm just going to add some more data to my Excel file. That, that meaning I'm going to append some more rows to the source that I, that I am using on my Tableau source file. So by appending this, I'm going to feed some more categories onto my dashboard, which are car tires, and I'm going to feed in data for 2020. So uh, before we only had data for 2019. What I'm going to do now is open again my workbook and without any need of clicking refresh, I'm going to have the latest data available. So that, that means I'm going to have data for both 2020 and the car tires category. What this really does is it eliminates the need of having to refresh your workbooks and re-upload them to the server because as soon as your data changes in the back end, it will also change on the front end. So as you can see now, I have actually a new addition to my legend, which is car tires. And if I click on the play axis, you're gonna be able to see data for the 2020 quarter. So that's it, very easy, passing new information onto Tableau and automatically getting the data that you want and that you need. I just wanted to touch upon some of the new features that Tableau has released in the 2020.2 version, which was in beta until today that it finally got released to the general public. And following the trend of making everything fast, accessible, easy to use, we see some improvements around on-set actions and set controls. And this allows the user to change the focus of the analysis by changing what members make part of the set directly from a view or a visual or from a drop-down list. We have also seen improvements on the data connectivity side of things especially around spatial data with the new S3 and Oracle connectors for Tableau Desktop, or also the new Salesforce connector to Tableau Prep. And also in Prep, a major update is the availability of incremental refreshes. So now you can just load the additional rows in your data set, reducing the time and resource consumed. And this combined with the ability to post flows and perform bulk operations, Grand Tableau prep greater flexibility and, and ease of work, really. But now, uh, one of the milestones that Tableau is hitting with this release is actually easy data modeling. 
So they have added a new feature called relationships that was presented in the Tableau conference as noodles. <laughs> and what this does is it simplifies data modeling and allows for powerful loading of complex data sets. So it can even deal with asymmetric data sources. And before, the way data modeling was done in Tableau Desktop is by the use of joins. So with joins, you could actually be missing out on important data. You could be filtering out nulls that might have been needed for your calculations um, and actually had to perform a lot of post uh, data validation steps to see if with your level of detail calculations, you were aggregating data to the level that you wanted it. But now with relationships, you can just drag and drop things onto this visual, um, into this dialog box on Tableau Prep, and Tableau would automatically find relationships within your sources. So it retrieves the right set of data without as many pre cleaning steps, let's say, or post LOD calculations. You just get data right at the right level. And furthermore, from a governance point of view, you can set uh, relationships to be predefined. So when you share your workbook uh, on Tableau Server, um, everyone is having one version of the truth to look at. As a last point to highlight, Tableau continues to develop its features in the cloud with a new ad addition called metrics. So with metrics, you can select uh, a mark or a data point from a visual in a dashboard and create a record for it. So you can improve the scalability of your calculations and their tracking. You can view your metrics across multiple dashboards. You can follow the evolution of these key metrics or KPIs in one spot. You can compare the value of your metric against past performance. You can even have like trend lines, you can see changes um, in percentages or in absolutes, and most importantly, you can just share your numbers and stay on top of them. This feature is especially good on mobile apps, so that only adds to the ease of access that Tableau is trying to pursue. As we have seen, really, Tableau's increasing focus is on making data availability easy and accessible. And with this, it comes smooth and faster data connections being enabled. So the updates that we have briefly touched upon also follow this line of allowing for a better data management and governance to then be able to build very cool, um, amazing visualizations on top of that and increase the value of your data stories. So if you would like to learn more about these features um, and explore how you can take advantage of this enhancement, or to see how Tableau fits in with your data architecture or how you can connect to different data sources, or in general, how we can help you with your business intelligence and analytics solutions, please feel free to get in touch. Um, I have left some links on the screen on some past webcasts that we've done on how Tableau can connect to various data sources, especially Tableau and Databricks, and also AWS. And I'm just referencing again the Tableau product roadmap from 2019 um, that has the data management add-on demo on it that my colleagues in the US did. My contact details are on the screen, so feel free to get in touch if you have any doubts. And thank you very much for your time today.